Welcome back to Tall and Pole Sports. I'm Coach Hutchings here with the great Coach Old School and, of course, the queen of the SEC, Miss <laughs> Sarah Blake. 5-0 and oh in all your bold picks, so very much oh, you are boy. a person to listen to. You are smarter than the majority of people that are out there right now broadcasting on the Internet and TV. I'm going to go ahead and just put that right out there. Well, thank you. So how's things going, uh, you know, after you've seen these – uh, crazy battles in, um, you know, just college football. And of course, the national championship game that I had a lot of people were picking TCU. And uh, well, we know what happened there. Was that even a game? Right. I don't know. I think it was more. I, just, of, uh, I mean, the playoff team. committee. Whew. So you went 5 and 0 oh in your picks. You didn't miss one. You was bearing everybody on ESPN, <laughs> that idiot coach from that uh, rich school in Kansas. Uh, that was a surfer growing up. Uh, you know more football than most men in America. How did you know that TCU was going to win that football game? And, and, I mean, George is pretty good. You picked them to beat <laughs> Ohio State. What gave you that feeling? Okay, so have you ever seen the movie Mean Girls where she can tell the weather by feeling her boobs? Yes, I have. Yeah. That's what it That's is. It. <laughs> That's the magic. <laughs> That's the magic. Yeah, and, and and can men can they pay uh for that ability or is that just something that you hold on to for your own uh, ability to pick games? It's my own ability. Yeah, it might be something that you could probably license out there, get better <laughs> MGM and get Bet Sarah Blake. You just have all the picks of that. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so no. um, but yeah, tell us just your thoughts on uh that that game overall. I mean, obviously there's not much to say, but I think Stetson Bennett proved like he's a guy that's gonna be in the next level. So this is what I love about Stetson Bennett is not only is it an incredible story, but I honestly feel like we need to look at how we're ranking these quarterbacks and and their stats because obviously we're getting it wrong if somebody like him is being so underrated to come in as a walk-on and do exactly what he did. That's why the story is incredible. It's not just because he's a walk-on. It's because we need to look at how these quarterbacks are being ranked and, and rated with their stats because stats are miscued. Look at Spencer Rattler. He's somebody that people talk about. Then you look at um, Anthony Richardson from Florida. They're, they're awful. They're leading. And the same with Will Levis. All right. He's another one of those. And you look at like KJ Jefferson, you look at uh, Will Rogers. There's a total difference with these guys because they're some of the top rated quarterbacks that are so underrated and not talked about, you know? Stetson, so. I saw the picture that someone posted when he was a recruit and I saw he had a big fro, looked like Screech from uh, <laughs> Saved by the Bell. And he's a nerd and I even like him more now. I mean, yes. that's the kind of guy I want to be my quarterback, not a guy that paints his fingernails. I mean, give me your opinion on Caleb Williams painting his fingernails. Ew. Why are we doing that? Like, I mean, I think that's the best part of, of the whole thing is it's it's almost like Caleb Williams is like a Dennis Rodman, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I don't think he has a girlfriend like Carmen Electra. I mean, it's just – Definitely not. I, I, the best player on the best team should win the Heisman. All right, and anybody that watched that Lincoln Riley went to yes. USC, he was not the best player on the best team. They couldn't even no. win the Pac-12, and who did they play in the bowl game? I mean, that was embarrassing. Who was that, Tulane? Oh, my gosh. What yep. do you think about that USC losing to Tulane? It just shows you. Like, I can't wait until the playoff expansion, honestly, because this is just like you're looking at all these things and all these bowl games, and you're like, well, how is this? How is this happening, especially with TCU and Georgia? Like, I almost feel like, not just because I'm a huge Tennessee fan, but the Tennessee-Georgia game, that was the playoff game. That should have been your championship game, really, because those are two people in the SEC and two powerhouses. I don't know how Alabama is above Tennessee, for one, uh, unless you want to talk about how you know crooked the whole Nick Saban thing is and, and how much power that man holds. Um, but... USC and Tulane, that game, for them to, to lose to Tulane with a Heisman quarterback, get out of here. It's like Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson could not beat Coastal Carolina. I do not want a quarterback that cannot beat Tulane. That kid, I would not pick him with his painted fingernails. I mean, it's 
It's unreal. Well, you look in the NFL right now, and you're seeing, like, uh, Josh Allen. Look at him and where he came from and how he started. But then you have these, like, quarterbacks who are, what, number one draft picks, like Will Levis? How no. is this working out for NFL quarter, you know what I mean, from college to NFL? How is it translating? Yeah, I agree. And that's that's something I've talked about for years, just being a football player and a football coach. When you see these number one draft picks or first round draft pick quarterbacks and I watch them in college, I'm like, they're a fantastic college player, but they just don't have the skills, I think, to do what it takes to be a good NFL player. And, right. you know, I, I think back to like RG3, watched him in college, thought he was fantastic. But, you know, he did some good things in terms of playing for Washington. But overall, I mean, he's not in the league anymore. He's not doing, you know, where you think he would be at this stage in the game. Tim Tebow. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that, you know, with the fingernail stuff. He was putting Bible verses on his eyes. And now we've gone down such a low road with that with painted fingernails with F, you know, different schools on there. <laughs> Oh, man. I had a friend, and he saw you, and he said, I I think that she is a Tennessee fan. I said, well, she actually is because he said when he looks at you, all he sees is a 10. Uh, uh, <laughs> and you're a Tennessee fan, and when he looks at you, all he sees is a 10. So he knew you were a Tennessee fan. It's definitely a coach old school. So <laughs> the coach old school statement. Uh, what do you think about them not putting Tennessee in the top five? You know, uh, Hendon Hooker, I know that's a big loss, but again, the team as a whole, again, it's not just one player that makes the team. Oh God. Yeah, this that was my argument. I was so upset because I'm like, all right, we can't, yes, Hendon Hooker is injured, but you're not supposed to, like, the way that you're supposed to pick these playoff teams isn't how they're doing it. Like, how, how can you, I don't, it, it, there's so much things running through my head right now because it's just mad. It makes me mad. <laughs> like the I'm way happy. that that all ended, like how J Joe Milton was shafted. Like, what about him? It's about the team. It's not just about one player. I mean, rest in peace, Mike Leach. He said it a long time ago. Why don't we go in down to the local rec field and figure <laughs> out how they determine their championship and then move maybe a big high school. And he said it so long ago, have a tournament. And four teams is not enough, especially when a team loses in their conference championship and they get in there and beat a Michigan team because Jim Harbaugh is going to go back to the NFL and coach for Jim Ursay. I mean, it's just – it's it's ridiculous. And uh, let's talk about these college football coaches that did not vote your Tennessee volunteers into the top five. Well, let's talk about who they are and how bitter they are. Are you kidding me? Greg Schiano? like, okay, we all know that whole deal and how that all came about. And then who else was it? Butch Jones? Like, why does Butch Jones even have a vote? Get him out of here. Like, just Where is he coaching? Him. I mean, Arkansas I State, right? Oh, he's a snake yeah. oil salesman. He, he was in the band. Like, just whatever. Brilliant, brilliant football-minded person. <laughs> You know what he did? He followed Brian Kelly. Everywhere Brian Kelly went, he went. And then Tennessee bought into him and got him to be their coach, and it didn't work out. Right. Yep. <laughs> so Saban, did Saban vote Tennessee ahead of Alabama? No, I, I think he put Alabama before. He lost the football game. Tennessee beat Alabama in a game. Mm -hmm. And they are the better team. They were the better yep. team that Saturday. It was the best football game I watched in Tennessee. Josh Heupel's a good kid. Everybody likes him. He's not a jerk. He's not like Lane Kiffin. How about right. Lane Kiffin? I mean, what did he lose? Eight in a row at the end? I mean, what's his deal? Oh, I was actually you know, surprised to see how he ended that season. It, it reminds me of when he coached for the Raiders and tried like a 68-yard field goal. <laughs> and he got fired the next day by Al Davis. It's unbelievable. I mean, Lane, your daddy was Monty, and he was a great football coach. And, you know, do you think that Lane Kiffin dyes his hair? I mean, he's got to be 50. I don't know, actually. Because his if he does dye his hair, then it's it's a good job, whoever's doing it. Unlike it matches right somewhat. Day. You know, I know he, he had blonde hair. And now, Coach is from Southwest Virginia, or he went to college in Southwest Virginia. And there's this clown. I call him Coach Clown. And he said something about inbreeding. So 
I want to show Coach Hutchings. Coach, you see that there? We, we got two exhibits of inbreeding. All right. Which one of these is inbred? Do you think exhibit A or do you think possibly exhibit B? Which one there is inbred there, Coach? You know, I've seen my fair share of stuff down southwest Virginia, but that is cut and dry right there. Exhibit B, inbred. Uh, and really doesn't look like, though, anything about sports. So. Oh, Co Coach Clown, if you want to marry your first cousin, it is legal in West Virginia. In Southwest Virginia, in certain counties, it is. But you need to leave our girl alone. She, We are the ones that made her the queen of college football. And I know that you like to be called the queen of the SEC because we're Southern. And we take more pride in being that. And – how does that make you feel that you got the name, the queen of college football and the queen of the SEC? I'm honored. <laughs> I'm so excited. I was like, okay, well, um, Greg Larnard was like, oh, Vol Nation bombshell. And I'm like, all right, I like that. And then, it, then it progressed and I'm like, oh, I love this. I love the progression. I'm feeling very good about myself right now. <laughs> hey, man, we're feeling very good because we got you on. I mean, we just we, – we feel like we got the, the Midas touch. Everything we touch is – just becomes gold. We're oh. looking at the next season in the SEC. What what do you see happening in the SEC? Well, I mean, look at Georgia's schedule and how freaking easy it is. One. Two, I do think I, – I, somebody just asked me a question about how South Carolina is going to fare next year because, you know, we lost to South Carolina. I think Shane Beamer now has things on film and – and now he's proved himself to be a school that people actually need to prepare for and watch film on. So I don't think it's going to fare well now that we move forward, especially with him and Spencer Rattler and the things that they got going on. But I think Tennessee is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, we might be able to compete a little bit stronger. I mean, we went with our how we went this year versus – upcoming i think it's going to be good for us sec wise i don't know about lsu um florida is having a lot of trouble if you haven't seen florida and their transfer portal and then the situations that they got going on with their quarterbacks and how one was you know i mean i don't even want to repeat all the things that they have going on with their quarterbacks now and I don't know what's going to happen with SEC. I think Florida's going to have another down year. They're going to transition. They're going to, they're going into their phase of what I think Tennessee did for the last few years. Um, Kentucky, that's another school that I, I don't think is going to do We do anything. not like Kentucky. We're from right. South Virginia, and we do not like Kentucky. No. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out, but I, I can definitely confidently say that Tennessee is back, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the SEC. Amen. And with what is going on there at LSU, I mean, that is wow. unbelievable. Have you – you are the queen of the SEC. I mean, is there any more information coming out of that whole debacle? Coach, are you familiar with that situation? Truth be told, I'm not. Well, Coach, they, their coach and their <laughs> players and their staff personnel, they like to have a lot of fun in the same room without clothes wow. on. and. If you what, what do you got, Brian Kelly? I mean, come on, what is going on? I, he's got to know. I mean, you know what I mean. Like in that situation, it's it's your staff and your player. At the beginning of the year, we had a lot of issues with Brian Kelly and Kayshawn Booty, and I was like, just as a woman, I was like, all right, something's not adding up, and something's not right here. Like there's something internally going on, whether it be with Brian Kelly or with his staff or something, but. I just don't trust him as a human being. I, I don't like him. Um, I don't know. That whole situation, I can't imagine being a coach and, and doing something like that with one of my players. It is crazy. I, I don't I don't even want to know else you just from what y'all have said. That doesn't sound I've never been an LSU fan, to be honest with you. Um, they they kind of shafted me back in the day when I was doing my college football stuff. Um, but that kind of brings my next point. Uh, there's been some talk out there about expanding the SEC. And I got to I gotta go shout out to Virginia Tech. I don't think it would be a good decision for them to they go. They need to go back to the Big East. That's the only way that yeah. Virginia Tech is going to win. But if you had your pick, who would you add and who might you take away out of the SEC as it stands right now? <laughs> this is fun. So I would take Mizzou out completely. Like, get them gone. Get them out of here. They need to go back to the Big 12. Um I know that we're going to like the expansion with Oklahoma and Texas. 
I don't know how this is all going to work out. I mean, you look at like Colorado schools like that who have, who have left the Big 12. I, I just wish that it would go back to kind of being what it was without the expansion, because then I think that the Big 12 would be a little bit more um, interesting. Uh, then you look at like other schools, you got the Big 10, you got the Pac-12, like, like, is this for real? It's just everybody's expanding and going to where the money is. But I don't, I don't think Oklahoma or Texas wants what the SEC has. I don't think they're ready yet. Um, it'll be interesting. It, it is very interesting. And all of us being from the South, we know where the best football is played. We know that the SEC dominates. And I am very excited about the future of the Tennessee Volunteers football program under Josh Heupel. And I have not had a team for a long time. I remember when uh, uh, Coach Nealon was the coach down there, uh, the general. <laughs> now, I'm old, and I think I'm going to pull for the Volunteers for now on. But you are a Tampa Bay Bucks fan, correct? And so – Kind of. Um, I like Tom Brady. Of course, I live here. I want them to win. So, like this guy right here? He's <laughs> yeah, a Tampa guy. Bay fan. But I, I do like the Titans. Of course, that's like my, my team as far as that goes. But I do now, Vrabel, Tampa Bay. I miss the Oilers. I, I heard what you said about Vrabel now. What is so sexy about Mike Vrabel? He's a good-looking man now. What is it? He's is toughness? What is it? He's just a man. Like there's something about him. Like it's it's like he's a real man. His body, like just the way he handles and carries himself. It's something about him. It's definitely appealing. So Harbaugh, he's got a big body too, but he's just like a nerd <laughs> or what? Mm. He's like a I don't know. He's a dude. cringe. Yeah. Like coach old school. <laughs> other than got different glasses on, I probably probably would look like Harbaugh. No, no, like, I mean, just something about him. It's his khakis, I think. He's like a creep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a creep. Hey, I think his brother is a lot cooler. Kind of, maybe. Kind of, okay. <laughs> so, I, I do got to ask you, just bring it back to Tennessee for a second. Tennessee, uh, Virginia Tech played in Bristol at the biggest game, I guess, ever in history in terms of college mm -hmm. football. Uh, I unfortunately wasn't able to make that game, but I had friends that went there. Did you get to see that? I watched it on TV. Did you watch it? Did you get to go? And uh, do you think it was a good idea to have that in the middle of racetrack with people literally 100 yards away? Okay, so I loved everything about that. I think that's exciting. It brings more entertainment value, but it's like it, even with, with recruiting, that's an awesome thing to do because then you give these kids a different platform to play at. Um, I, was, I did not go. I was pregnant for this and I was close to having a baby <laughs> but I would have loved to be there yes so look into the NFL playoffs now we know that you are the queen of the SEC and queen of college football do you have an opinion on the NFL playoffs I, I think this whole thing is just I have focused on like bowl season so now I'm starting to like refresh on everything that's going on with the NFL and, and who we've got in the playoffs now and the whole situation. And I don't know. I just think it's such a business. Like it, it, they've taken a lot out of the NFL to make it be a business. And it's no longer fun for me like that college football atmosphere. Yeah, no, no fun league. Yeah, we're, we're kind yes. of in the same boat as that. It's more entertainment now than it is competition. Yep. They yeah. say that it is classified as entertainment. That means that they can fix the end of the game, which I think there's been quite a few games that's been fixed. Giants, and, commanders. Yeah, the, I would say the AFC is going to win. I mean, Josh Allen, like you said. Yes. I mean, it, you got some really good quarterbacks. I mean, Joey Burrow. I mean, I. W w what do you think about him being from LSU? I mean, he is an SEC guy. I mean, who, who do you think probably is the coolest NFL quarterback? Who who would you like to hang out with? They're probably, you know, young guys, probably not many mature. Would it be Josh Allen? I think so. I like him a lot. Um, I like his character. I like his story. Um, I like him. Now, Tom Brady, you know, I'm trying to see 
in my mind, like all the things that I think of with the NFL and it being the not real, you know, thing about it being entertainment now. I'm like, so are they going to carry out that Tom Brady had this personal life issue and now he's prevailed? Is that going to be something that happens that we see? Or is he going to lose to the Cowboys? And this is going to be the end of his season for as far as this year goes. And or or are we going to see Josh Allen like get a Super Bowl? And I think that it, who I have in the Super Bowl, I have them in the Super Bowl with the Eagles. So it'll be interesting to see how it all like kind of plays on who's who's storyline. Amen. I mean, the the Bills with what occurred to DeMar yep. Hamlin, they may be a team of destiny. Now, mm-hmm. now being a mom and having kids that play sports, were you watching the game when DeMar went down? Yep. Man, it's just shocking that something like that happens. And my biggest beef, and I, I tweeted about it, I talked to people about it, the NFL wanted that game to go on. It was the players that quit. The NFL, they, they you know, said five minutes, get back on the field. Uh, I don't know if there's any pro wrestling fans out there, but it reminded me of when Owen Hart passed away. Um, they literally took him out and they said, all right, Vince said, get the next ones out there and clean the entire pay-per-view. And to me, I was like, yep, entertainment. They're, they're trying to get their money's worth. And I hated, they were like, we'll check back in uh, and with any more details. And then it goes off to buy a new iPhone. Here's a new Nissan. Right. Like they could have done such, you know, other things, but they got to get that revenue money. And I think that yep. just looked bad on the NFL. Uh, it looked great on the athletic trainers and how they acted. Yep. But in terms of organization, like I'm not, I just don't think NFL is is the place to really grow and, and have the best experience anymore. Mm-mm. You know, XFL is getting ready to start. So who's seen? Yeah, who's I'm excited that? about that. <laughs> yeah. So what? What? How, how did you feel watching that? I mean, I know you felt the same way as us, but being a mom and you know, think about uh, Demar's mom and all that. What? How did you feel watching that? So my opinion on this whole thing is that you know they're they're making all these rules and stuff and they're taking the gameplay and slowing it down, which is which means more people are going to get hurt. And for no reason, as far as that goes, it, we're we're playing God, I feel like, with football now. And it's it's getting bad to where people are getting really hurt and they're getting injured. But if if that was my kid out there, I I don't know. I, I, I would rush to him, you know, it makes I woke up all night like seeing if there were any updates. I don't think I slept that whole night because I was like, what, what's going on? What happened? Like you just dissect the situation and you want to know exactly what it was because as a mom, you're like, my, that could be my kid. I, I totally agree. And this, I may offend some people out there that don't believe in prayer or America, but I was proud that night to be an American and yep. how everybody pulled together, no matter your color, your skin, your religion, where you were from, your bank account, everybody was praying for DeMar Hamlin. It made me proud to be an American. Do you I feel agree. the same way that I feel? And I was proud to be a football coach. Yes. Man, it, and it, it goes to show you, like, there's no other community like that of the sports industry, and especially football, because everybody comes together at that point, you know? I, I, I totally agree. Uh, we're a family all the way from the Rick football coaches to the NFL, yep. which stands for not for long because they don't <laughs> care about you. That's yeah. why I don't uh, support my Redskins anymore. They changed the name. They fired Scott Turner. They should have fired Ron Rivera a long time ago. Even though I think he's a good football coach. Now, uh, queen of the SEC, what exactly do you have going on? I know college football is over with. Now, what is the next thing you are working on? I know you have the Tip Drill podcast, but you're a very busy mom, very busy woman. You, you're a business lady. I respect that. So I've got a lot going on now. Um, I will be doing like an autograph signing in March uh, <laughs> in New York. Um, I've New got York a- City? Uh, New York City, yeah. The big city. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I'm going to do, I've got, I'm working on my alcohol line. Um, I will be launching something really fun coming up. It's in the works right now. Um, so we are going to have a liquor come out soon. Um, nice. Yeah, I'm excited about Is that. Is it going to be moonshine? Yes! Yeah! There you go. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Coach old school. Okay, I spent... A week in Roanoke one night. 
And I know all about Franklin County and their moonshine. That's the moonshine capital of the world there. Okay. I'm from Appalachia. Can you tell us a little bit more? Now you got me excited. Make me feel young. So actually you might know one of the, the distillery that I'm working with because it is um, up there. There you go. But, Big fan of moonshine. Gets the job done and yeah. don't need a lot of it. And you can just sip it and have a hotty toddy. That yeah. stuff will cure anything. Exactly. It'll cure COVID. <laughs> so we've got that coming up. Um, we've got, I'm getting mini pigs this weekend for my farm. Some tea kit mini, mini pigs. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then um, we're actually looking into getting giraffes. Wow. Now, we'll giraffes, see. they have a tongue. That is longer than Gene Simmons. It's so gross and it's black and sticky. <laughs> oh, man. I had a guy I knew once he went on a liquid diet. He didn't eat nothing uh, for a whole two months. He just drank protein shakes and that <laughs> superfood green stuff. And his tongue turned black. Oh. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was like all the toxins were coming out of his uh, mouth. Is there anything else that you got going on? Because I like to ask you a question about being healthy because I've tried to go on a diet. My wife told me I need to lose weight. She's tired of me of her wiping my end with the, the dude wipes because I can't reach. Uh, <laughs> is there any advice? I know it's calories in and calories out, but what, what would you advise? Oh my gosh. I struggle with it too, because I love food and I love like, I mean, the SEC. So I love my like, fried chicken and collard greens and everything like that. Banana pudding. Um, Amen. I'm, I'm getting surgery this um, upcoming two weeks or whatever. So I and can't we'll say that I'm somebody you. We'll be good. Good that, that, you know? that, that is awesome. And I totally agree. I like to eat. Okay. I eat <laughs> everything, but is it true that skinny people don't eat bread? Skinny people don't eat bread. That's what someone told me. They said, Coach Old School, you got to stop eating bread. So that means I can't eat pizza. I mean, we oh eat God, little that's Caesars. Too hard. Yeah, I mean, it. it is nuts. Coach loves little Caesars too. Little Caesars. <laughs> we got a local spot, Dante's, that loads us up, hooks us up for being coaches. And that's, that's. I mean, if it's not once a week, it's twice a week for eating pizza. But oh, I probably it. cut it back to <laughs> two slices instead of four slices. <laughs> but we would like to let you know that men, Real men, the common men, we do not like our females looking like 13-year-old boys, okay? They are not supposed to be 80 pounds, all right? <laughs> There's something wrong with a certain guy that needs to hire Sarah Blake Cheek. Dave Portnoy, you need to call Sarah Blake Cheek, and you need to get her on one of your shows, all right? He's supposed to be worth $500 million. <laughs> He's worth more than the government. You need to call her up and get her on bar stool. If not, totem pole, we're moving in. Uh, we yeah. want her to go to the top. We're the low man on the totem pole. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't, if those are watching, uh, checking this out, if you didn't realize now that Wash is the queen of the SEC, you should already know just from the knowledge coming out and everything that you've yeah. been sharing. So is there anything else you would like to tell totem pole nation? Sarah, how can we do to, what can we do to support you? Just follow me and keep cheering me on as I grow. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm coming out there and and I'm excited for this year for the SEC and stuff. So uh, as as Tennessee grows, I grow. <laughs> there you go. Well, Mark, Mark is down for getting a, a case of your moonshine. Yes, um, absolutely. And then, uh, we, yeah, we might have to put you an ad up there. Yeah, yeah. for your moonshine. Yep. Yeah. Man, coach, yeah. we are moving up. We might not. We might be the middle guy on the totem pole since we got Sarah so. Blake cheek twice. I think so. You're helping, helping us out big yeah. time getting up that, that totem pole here. Well, thank so. you. You guys are helping me out too, so thanks. Yeah. Well, we definitely appreciate you. And uh, I know you mentioned uh, surgery, so we want to say we're praying for you and hope that goes well. Yeah. Um, I got to mention, you see Cultivate Wellness at the top. Um, I got my father is actually the reason I got involved with Cultivate Wellness CBD company because uh, he had brain surgery and found out that's a neuroprotectant. And it blew my mind from hearing about, you know, cannabis and all that stuff for years being this is your brain on drugs. And I didn't know this miracle thing was in there uh, and really changed his life. And so I wanted to definitely give them a shout. And uh, they're they're an amazing company. And like I said, um, 
as you continue to grow, uh, we definitely want to, you know, continue to support you. And like I said, you got, you got me very, very intrigued about that moonshot. I haven't had much since uh, back in the college days in Southwest Virginia. So definitely looking forward to seeing what you come out with there. And I'll be out there. I'm going to be out there when that all launches. So I'll have to tell you guys. Awesome. We're looking forward to it. Anything else you'd like to say, uh, Sarah, the Total Pole Nation? I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you so we, much. We seriously your appreciate it. You know, you're a multi-time guest now on our show. You're our first actual multi-time guest. Um, so I want to thank you so much for that. And, uh, you know, America, if you haven't followed Sarah Blake yet, reach out, Twitter, Instagram, everything. You know, check out her website. Uh, go ahead and plug your website, right? Sarah Blake, the Sarah Blake com, correct? Yep. Yep. Definitely check that out. And uh, seriously, we would definitely appreciate everything that you've done and while you've been able to share and your knowledge. You are the queen of the SEC. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for having me on. Appreciate you. You have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy uh, the three days if you go. You too.